I got a question from Jay, and Jay says, is it okay to train your squat at a heavier weight than your deadlift? I'm 40 years old, and my current workout plan is a combination of 5 by 5 barbell, hard style kettlebell, calisthenics, and some loaded carries. Uh, and that's because you're 40, okay? Uh, when you get a little older, you're, you're going to have to you know, simplify that down. A couple of years ago, I had a serious medical issue that required major abdominal surgery. I'm fine now. Remember, I don't give medical advice. After having to take it easy for the better part of a year to recover from my medical injuries and surgery, I developed a bulging disc in my lower back. That's resolved. Boy, you sound like me. But I've literally had to start from scratch. I can back squat and front squat with the barbell with no problems. However, barbell deadlifts with a traditional stance begin to uh, aggravate my back. So for my hinge movements, I've been doing lighter, higher rep, sumo stance deadlift, single leg deadlift, kettlebell swings. He asked, he asked the question, do you think long-term that this will lead to muscular imbalances? No, no, I don't. Of course not. In fact, one of the interesting things about the deadlift, and again, I hate to keep doing this, but if you go to the members area and you read the easy strength stuff, I include an article about increasing your deadlift by not deadlifting, which is kind of a fascinating thing. There are people who believe that doing like three sets of 20 with light deadlifts is just as good as doing heavy loaded deadlifts. When I first heard that, I went, oh, that doesn't, but then I thought about reps. So doing high rep deadlifts, as long as you're in a safe position, you have the courage to maintain it, um, and you stop well below your blow up, I think will help the hinge as much as anything. Of course, you know, the kettlebell swing, if you believe in physics, of course, that would mean if you're an American, you have to believe in science, which is I read, not many do anymore, but force equals mass times acceleration. So if you're doing kettlebell swings and you're really focusing on the acceleration, well, it could, according to physics, match heavy deadlifts. So it's going to be one of those things now, the only thing I can say with an injured back, how fast do you want to roll, you want to hit things? And with the, with an injured back, how heavy do you want to think, do things? So as much as I hate to give medium advice, you might have to find that middle place. That's why I recommend with the uh, military guys I work with, the rack deadlift. Because the rack deadlift, so you get a rack, you put the barbell either one inch below your knee or one inch above your knee. And you do deadlifts. The nice thing about it, we start that program off with sets of 25, which is enormously high reps for the deadlift movement. But since you're in the rack, you're in a hinge position. This is your butt. Here's your chin. You're in a hinge position the whole time. And that seems, if you keep the integrity of the hinge position, it is a neutral back position, uh, slight arch here. Um, slide arch in the neck, neutral, and you're just doing, um, you're basically doing slow kettlebell swings. I would like to add something you don't have there, but I don't know why you don't have hip thrusts uh, as part of your training protocol, because I think the Brett Contreras hip thrust, and I would use bands if I were you, uh, bands around your waist, uh, and of course, and then a glute band around your knees. You're going to push your knees out the whole time. Um, that might be the answer to a lot of your pr problems because there'll be no load on your spinal column. You'll have bands, but no load and your glutes have to do all the work. It's just an idea, but I'd like you to think about it. 